Hello, four real scholars. So, um, this video today is your um, well, your your lesson for Monday um, on the present subjunctive. Uh, well, the practice for the present subjunctive, I suppose. Um, if, by the way, if you are in Zeus cohort and watching this, um, you have already um, you know had had the introduction for this. Um, so if you're in Zeus cohort, you can go ahead and uh, you know fast forward to the end um, for you know just to correct your answers because you've already heard all this before. Um, if you are in a cohort, um, Athena cohort, or if you're full time distance, um, you know pay very 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 close attention because um, we're going to go through a, a few more things than just the exercise itself that you will want to have for the future. Okay. Um, so good, now that I've scared everybody away, uh, let's go ahead and um, look at what we have. So your instructions say, if the verb form is subjunctive, label it subjunctive and write the person and number, right? So first, second, or third person, singular or plural, okay? And you can tell just by the ending, right? Because after all, in the present subjunctive, the endings don't really change, it's just the stem vowel that does, okay? and then. But if you have a verb that is not subjunctive, okay, so if it's, if it's indicative, you're going to translate the verb according to its person, number, tense, and voice. All right, so I realize this is kind of like putting a lot of things together all at once. So with that in mind, if, if you flip over to the back or, you know, click to page two if you're looking at this uh, online or on your computer, um, I added all the vocab words. So every single verb on the front side of the page is right here. All right, so they're defined over here for you. Okay, really you just have to know your endings. So uh, you either have them in your brain or you have out your handy dandy verb endings uh, chart, which by the way, I did add um, on the assignment down below. Um, I did attach this as well, just in case you don't Happen to have it. Okay, so you'll need your endings sheet um, definitely, uh, but you also want your grammar notes too because you're, you're going to need to remember what the vowel change is for the subjunctive to be able to figure out if it's subjunctive or not. Okay, so again, lots of moving parts here, so th that's why this assignment is um, you know takes place over multiple days. Okay, so you know, remember. You need to know what conjugation a verb is to know what your vowel change is for the subjunctive, right? So um, we'll do the first couple here just to review, but uh, I'll just write the conjugation over here on the side and the rest of them. All right, so remember, to figure out the conjugation of the verb, you go to the second principal part, chop off the RE, and the vowel that's left tells you the conjugation. Okay, if it's, uh, if it's a long A, it's first. If it's a long E, it's second. If it's a short E, it's third. And if it's a long I, it's fourth. Okay, so here we have a long I, so this one's fourth. Okay, next one, crego cratere. Looks like a short E, so that's third. Okay, deleo delere, chop off the RE, looks like a long E, so that one's second. Okay, so I'm not gonna go through um, you know, each one of them like that, I'll just write the answers here, but um, you wanna be absolutely comfortable for that on your quiz on Wednesday, so two days from now, you're gonna have to do that a bunch of times again. So uh, you know, make sure you're comfortable with that. Um, it's, it's not supposed to be a tricky exercise, but you know, again, you know, if, if it's causing you some troubles, make sure you ask. Okay, so dicere, third, dare is first, eripere is third, liberare is first, nitere third, moere second, skire fourth, and uh, winko winkere is third. All right, good. So, uh, you know, make sure you have that good to go. So, back to the front of our page. Um, 
I already said we're going to have to add a few other things to this just to, to make it go nice and smoothly for you. So it occurred in, in uh, our class the other day uh, for Zeus cohort that we really needed to review um, what third conjugation verbs look like uh, in order to, to do this exercise, because after all, there's a lot of thirds on this page. So um, just really quick, um, this is like the crash course in the third conjugation. Okay, so first, second, and fourth conjugations, you, you do the steps you've been doing for a while now, which is to conjugate the verb, you go to the second principal part, and you chop off the RE. So for a first conjugation verb like uh, amo amare, right? If, for most of the forms, you go to the second part, you chop off the RE, you have your stem, and then you add your ending. So OST, most is empty, so amat. Okay, for instance. All right, but for third, third conjugations are a little bit weird. It's why they get their own chapter in, in your book uh, when you learned them a while, a while back. It's also it's so traumatic to learn that a lot of people kind of, you know, push it out of their brains as soon as the chapter's over. So um, uh, let's, let's look real quick at, at, at how fourth or excuse me, third conjugation verbs work. So, you know, if you want to write this down, probably a really good idea. Um, otherwise, you know, just you can go back and freeze the video if you want. So third conjugation verbs, okay, they're a little bit weird in that, well, remember, uh, you know, a, a verb like mito mitoret, for example. They have that short E as the stem vowel, okay? So chop off the RE, short E, so it's a third. What's weird about that E is that in the regular old, you know, present tense, you know, future tense, imperfect tense, um, a lot of times this E turns into the letter I. In the regular, you know, nothing fancy about it, you know, indicative version of, of your verbs. So, in other words, in the present tense, you would expect that you could go to the second part, chop off the RE, and just add your endings, right? OST, was TIS NT. Well, unfortunately, you can't um, because of how third uh, conjugation verbs work. Instead, um, when you're conjugating, you can, you, you can write in, you know, uh, basically you chop off the RE and the E, you can write that part in, um, and we're going to do that first. So for a third conjugation, you go to your second principal part, you actually chop off the ERE. -E. Okay, so we'll conjugate our verb. All right, and we're just writing what's left of the stem. Okay, so. Now we know that in the present tense, and we'll go ahead and write that here. In the present tense, all right, you, um, your endings are O, S, T, mus, tis, and T. Okay, that, that never really changes. But <clears throat> what's weird, like I said, is <clears throat> there's a unique sort of pattern in the endings. So for first person singular, the I form, well, it's mito, right? And remember, you always get that one as your first principal part anyway. But now, you, you can still add s, t, mus, tis, and t, but you have to change your vowel, okay? So instead of using that e, for reasons known best to the Romans, you change it to an i. So second person singular is mitis. Third person singular, mitis. Uh, first person plural, mitimus. Right? Second person plural, mititis. And uh, oddly, instead of mithint, you have mithunt. Okay? So that's how you conjugate a third uh, conjugation verb in the uh, present tense. Now, all of a sudden, in the future, uh, this is where it, you know, that E actually comes back. All right, there's a handy little trick I'll mention in just a second. All right, so for the future, you do the same thing, okay? 
you normally would go to the second principal part and chop off the RE. For third, though, you had to chop off the ERE. Okay? So, we can go ahead and write our stem. All right, now, looking at your verb chart, you know, this might ring some bells, actually. Um, <clears throat> your verb chart, remember how for the future, we had a separate set of endings for first and second conjugation future and third and fourth conjugation? Well, this is a third conjugation. So instead of bo, bis, bit, bimus, bitus, bunt, you have am, ace, et, amus, acus, ent. Okay? And you actually add those endings right onto this stem. Okay? So am, ace, et, amus, atus, all right, and the trick here is, outside of the first person singular, the marker for the future for a third conjugation verb is actually the E. Okay? So if you see, and this will come in handy in just a second for our exercise, if you see a third conjugation verb and there's an E in it, it's probably future tense. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it could be a long E, it could be a short E, as you see, but if it's third conjugation and there's an E, you want to start thinking that it's probably in the future. All right? And the reason we're taking all this time to go over, over um, third conjugation again is because that is really weird. Right? It kind of goes contrary to a lot of the things that, that we know. So, um, again, you know, if you need to freeze the frame and, and uh, write this down, that would be a really good idea, but otherwise, um, you know, you can always you know, go back and look at this again. All right, so with that long introduction, let's go ahead and um, start our exercise. Um, again, uh, as usual, we're not going to go through and do every single one because, you know, one by one because that will take like an hour. Um, so we'll do the first few, and then I'll go ahead and show you the answers. Uh, as usual. Again, guys, I can't say this enough. Please make sure you're not just copying the answers down because that really doesn't do anything for you. Um, going through, you know, you, you have two days to work on this, if not more. Um, so please, you know, take the time, you know, you know, make sure you're going through and, and trying um, before you actually look at the answers, okay? So uh, one other thing before we get started is you'll notice on the page that our verbs are actually kind of grouped with the same verb more than once, right? So you see one, two, and three all come from mito. So what I like to do, because I'm a visual learner, I like to you know, group them like this so I can just see it, okay? And I know, like, okay, these three kind of go together, right? These two go together, det and dot. Um, credant, credunt, credent, you know, same deal. Moent, moeant, um, you know, those ones go together, and so forth, all right? Um, so you, you don't have to do that, but um, I like to just because it's a nice visual, all right? Um, so let's look at the first three. So with everything we've just gone over, um, we can do our exercise. Now, um, another reason to group them like this is because actually what I like to do in stuff like this is look for the subjunctive one first. Get out of the way, and then we just can go back to regular old indicative where we're all a little more comfortable. All right, so you have to think back uh, using your grammar notes, hopefully, or just right out of your brain. Um, you gotta think of the vowel change for the present subjunctive, okay? So as we said uh, right at the beginning, if you have a first conjugation verb, the stem vowel is a long A, okay? But in the subjunctive, that becomes an E. Second, your stem vowel is a long E, but in the subjunctive, that becomes EA. Third, the stem vowel is a short E, but in the subjunctive, that becomes an A, unless it's a third IO. And we do have one of them on here. You know, if it's a third IO, your, your original E becomes an IA. And then if it's a fourth, remember third IO is act just like fourth. 
that long I becomes I A. So again, another another uh, little chart here you really want to have memorized. A to E, E to E A, and so forth. All right. Now I'll even keep this here for now because we're just looking at the first three. Okay. Now using this knowledge, you know, right from the from the back and everything we've said that mito mitra is a third conjugation verb. All right, third conjugation, the stem vowel is an E. But in the subjunctive, when it's conjugated, it becomes an A. So what that means is you're, you're going to want to look for a form, uh, one of these three forms that is that has that A in it. All right, and you look here, mitet, mm, no, that's an E. Mitat, aha, there's our A. And then we have mitet. All right, so what that tells me is that A shows me this is the subjunctive form. So you'll write subjunctive. And then remember, you also have to give the person a number. So T, remember, this is just OST, mustis enti. So OST, first, second, third person, singular, plural, third person, singular. Okay? Now for mitet and mitet, all right? Um, again, remember what we said over here? For a third conjugation verb, that E is the marker for the future. So you can save yourself a ton of time by memorizing things like this. Um, you, you memorize the conjugation of the verb, you, so you see that E, so you know just by looking at it, this is future. All right? And then to translate it, you just put everything together. Okay? The ending, O-S-T, must just end T, so we know it's he, she, or it. So he, she, it. You can pick one, you don't have to say all three, but um, he, she, or it, it's future, so will, and then mito mitra means to send. So he, she, it, will, send, okay? And then again, uh, mit it, that has an I, but you know, remember third conjugation verbs, in the present, decline, or excuse me, conjugate like this. So we're right here. Mitit would be he, she, it. Sends or is sending. Okay? So uh, this verb, or <laughs> this exercise is a little uh, little long, this video. Um, I apologize for the, for the length, but, um, you know, uh, hopefully, you know, you're able to, um, You'll get a good start on your exercise, and uh, you know, please do ask questions if and when you have them. You, you know how to contact me. Um, so I'll go ahead and uh, you can pause the video now, um, but I'll go ahead and you know, do the uh, Star Wars thing, slowly scroll through the answers here. Um, and you can pause these if and when you would like. Apologies for my handwriting here. Um, So uh, thanks again, scholars, for watching and you know attending class. Uh, so if you have any questions, as always, you can contact me on Zoom or on uh, you know via email or uh, in person if you are a hybrid scholar. So uh, again, thanks for watching, and I will see you all soon.